Lord be with you, and welcome to St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Junction City, Wisconsin. I'm Pastor Timothy Roser, and on this 10th Sunday after Pentecost, we follow the order of Matthias. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, O oh, come, let us worship him. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in his hand. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, O oh, come, let us worship him. Our psalm this day is Psalm 145. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall commend your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. On the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works, I will meditate. They shall speak of the might of your awesome deeds, and I will declare your greatness. They shall pour forth the fame of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his mercy is over all that he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord and all your saints shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power. To make known to the children of man your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and kind in all his works. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand, you satisfy the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and kind in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord preserves all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord, and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our office hymn this day is number 918 in Lutheran service book, Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer. Guide me, O thou great Redeemer, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with thy powerful hand. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Feed me till I want no more. 
crystal fountain whence the healing stream doth flow. Let the fiery cloudy pillar lead me all my journey through. Strong deliverer, strong deliverer, be thou still my strength and shield. Be thou still my strength and shield. When I tread the verge of Jordan, bid my anxious fears subside. Death of death and hell's destruction, land me safe on Canaan's side. Songs of praises, songs of praises, I will ever give to thee. I will ever give to thee. The Old Testament reading is from the book of Exodus, chapter 16. The whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the people of Israel said to them, Would that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the meat pots and ate bread to the full. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am about to rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's, day's portion every day that I may test them, whether they will walk in my law or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather daily. So Moses and Aaron said to all the people of Israel, At evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling against the Lord. For what are we that you grumble against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you in the evening meat to eat, and in the morning bread to the full, because the Lord has heard your grumbling that you grumble against him, what are we? Your grumbling is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. And as soon as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, they looked toward the wilderness. And behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the people of Israel. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quail came up and covered the camp, and in the morning dew lay around the camp. And when the dew had gone up, there was on the face of the wilderness a fine flake-like thing, fine as frost on the ground. When the people of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? But they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Epistle reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 4. I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives, and he gave gifts to men. In saying he ascended, what does it mean but that he also de had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, 
from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our text this day is the Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. On the next day the crowd that remained on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there, and that Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Other boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum, seeking Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not labor for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him the God, God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to be doing the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, Then what sign do you do that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus then said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. All too often, we get caught up looking for a bread king. We want someone who will fill our earthly needs and then just let us live our lives however we wish. Sadly, we usually can't see any farther than our earthly needs, and we constantly confuse our needs with our wants. Today, as he did long ago, Jesus challenges that way of looking at things. In short, Jesus points us to the true bread. What are you looking for from Jesus? What do you want or expect to get out of him? Most of us expect Jesus to take care of us, you know, to provide us with the things we need to live our lives. Of course, we'd like him to provide us according to our preferred standard of living. We surely don't want to live under siege in some war-torn country, nor scraping by from day to day after a disaster like a tornado, a hurricane, or an earthquake. A nice house, good food. Regular recreation and entertainment, these are the sorts of things we look for from Jesus. Notice how quickly we get caught up in the stuff of this world, this life. I'm not saying Jesus won't give us these things. He might. He might not. In that respect, our lives are subject to God's will, and he doesn't always tell us what that will is or is going to be. So with Job, we are called on to say, naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But Jesus wants us to look to him for more than earthly provisions. Jesus wants to give us food that lasts forever. True bread. Do not labor for the food that perishes, he said, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. So how do we get this bread? Well, we expect to work for it. In fact, we almost insist on working for it, which 
is kind of strange when you think about how often we try to make our lives easier with less work. We've invented all sorts of labor-saving devices, machines that will help us get things done easier and faster. Sometimes we hire people to take the brunt of our work for us. And yet when it comes to eternal life, we feel compelled to do something, or at least say we're doing something. We imagine our good lives, our church attendance, our offerings, or something we do should count toward our eternal reward. Even the crowds of Jesus' day thought this way. But Jesus told them otherwise. When they asked him, what must we do to be doing the works of God, Jesus answered them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. That's it. Don't do just believe. Not works, but faith. And faith is not even our work. It's not something we do. Faith is the work of God done in us. We learn elsewhere in the Bible that God the Holy Spirit creates faith in us when he comes to us in, through the word of the Bible and the sacraments, especially the sacrament of holy baptism. These are the things, we, these are not things we do. These are things God does in us and for us. It's all God's work, all a gift, the gift of faith. This means we are dependent on Jesus for everything. Is that a safe place to be? I mean, if I'm at least partially responsible for my eternal life, I have some idea of what has or has not been done about it. Can I really rely on Jesus for all this stuff? Will he really give all these things to me, all these gifts? Can Jesus really deliver on what he promises? That's what the people were asking when they said to him, What sign do you do that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? Strange, uh, they, they point back to the past. Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. They could remember the record of the Bible, and the manna that the Israelites ate while wandering in the wilderness over a thousand years earlier. But they couldn't remember what Jesus had just done. Feeding 5,000 men with five loaves of bread and two fish. They want a sign from him? They just had one. But Jesus gives them more than a sign. A mighty act for them to wonder at. He gives himself. Not a gift from Moses, but a gift from God. Truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Jesus is not offering us food we can eat today and need to restock tomorrow. He offers a different kind of bread, true bread, from heaven. He offers a bread that does more than give life to the body. This bread gives life to the world. Life, freedom from hunger, freedom from death, freedom from the fear of death. Life that conquers our fears and our foes. Life that brings us into a never-ending bliss of peace and joy, of dwelling with the Most High God in perfection forever. This is the life Jesus offers as he gives us the true bread from heaven. So where is this gift, this bread? And suddenly we realize that this stuff is beyond our reach. We cannot get it or earn it for ourselves. But we want it. Yes, we need it. Without it, we will die. Even if we have all the riches of this earthly life, we will still die. We will die in this life and we will die forever. But with this true bread, this bread that only Jesus gives, we will live forever. So turning to Jesus in helplessness and hope, we say with those people of old, Sir, give us this bread always. And Jesus replies to us as he did to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. The bread Jesus gives is Jesus himself. He says, look to me, I am the true bread. He has come from the Father into this world. He has gone to the cross to die for your sins, to take on himself the death that you and I deserve so that we may live. 
Yes, the bread Jesus gives is Jesus himself. Hear his words. Receive and live in his baptism. Hold fast to him in faith, and you will be eating true bread, this bread of life. Jesus feeds us with himself. He soothes our spiritual thirst with himself. We don't have to conjure up good feelings about God in our hearts or imagine we're hearing him speak to us as we have to have this faith. Here it is. Where the Spirit has promised to work. Here is Jesus, the true bread, coming in through your ears through the words of the scriptures. Here is Jesus, the true bread, creating faith in you through that anchor of life, holy baptism. Here is Jesus, true, the true bread, continuing to feed your faith through word and sacraments, body and blood given in the Lord's Supper. For here, Jesus himself delivers himself to you and to me. There are not many true breads. There is only one. Jesus is not one choice among many. Jesus is the only choice, the only option. In Jesus Christ, the Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Believe in this true bread. Believe in this Jesus. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue with the Te Deum. We praise you, O God, we acknowledge you to be the Lord. All the earth now worships you, the Father everlasting. To you all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To you cherubim and seraphim continually do cry. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of Sabaoth, Heaven and earth are full of the majesty of your glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise you. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise you. The noble army of martyrs praise you. The holy church throughout all the world does acknowledge you. The father of an infinite majesty, your adorable true and only son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. You are the King of glory, O Christ. You are the everlasting Son of the Father. When you took upon yourself to deliver man, you humbled yourself to be born of a virgin. When you had overcome the sharpness of death, you opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You sit at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that you will come to be our judge. We therefore pray you to help your servants, whom you have redeemed with your precious blood. Make them to be numbered with your saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save your people and bless your heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify you and we worship your name forever and ever. Grant, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let your mercy be upon us as our trust is in you. O Lord, in you have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and forever.
and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. Merciful Father, you gave your Son Jesus as the heavenly bread of life. Grant us faith to feast on him in your word and sacraments, that we may be nourished unto life everlasting. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gracious Heavenly Father, as you provided for the Israelites during their journey through the wilderness to the land you had promised, give us confidence to trust in your promises and to look to your hand to provide all we need for this life and for the life to come. Hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Master of the vineyard, sustain those whom you send into your harvest. Give your blessing to pastors, teachers, Christian leaders, and all who abide in your word, that they would be enabled to work diligently and faithfully for your kingdom. Hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God and Father of all, enable us to walk in humility, gentleness, and patience, that we would bear with one another in love and be eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord of all, hear our prayers for the hungry and the homeless. Provide for them not only bread to satisfy their hunger, but above all the true bread of life, Jesus Christ, who alone can fill and satisfy every need of body and soul. Show your mercy to the sick and hospitalized. Provide doctors, nurses, and other medical professionals to care for those who need health and healing. Hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Father in heaven, sustain the proper use of the sacraments among us, that your church would continue to be blessed with your gifts of forgiveness, life, and salvation through the waters of holy baptism and through the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Uh -huh.